In this video, we'll become familiar with the Bates 10, 2 and 16 number system, learn how to convert between them, and understand why hexadecimal is often used as a useful shorthand for binary. At A level, you need to be aware of three different base number systems. Base 2, binary, base 10, decimal, or sometimes called deanery, and base 16, hexadecimal. Let's start with the most well-known of these, base 10, decimal. This is the number system you are most familiar with. You've used it ever since you first learned to count. It contains just 10 unique digits, from 0 to 9. Why do you think our number system evolved in this way? Well, no one actually really knows the answer, but it probably has something to do with the fact that we have a total of 10 fingers and thumbs. The decimal system has no unique digit for the number 10. We have to put a 1 and a 0 together. Here we see a base 10 number line. On the far right, we have the lowest weighted column, that's our ones. As we move to the left, we see that the weightings of the columns times is by 10. So the second column is a tens column, then a hundreds, then a thousands. We can see the number here, 0010, is naught lots for thousands, plus naught one hundreds, plus one lot of tens, plus naught ones. So that's 10. We can write a more complicated number out, 4273. We understand that that's 4 lots of 1,000, plus 2 lots of 100, plus 7 lots of 10, plus 3 lots of 1. 4,273. Now, of course, we don't have to do this mental maths in our head. We've become so familiar with this number system that we see 4273 and we instantly read 4,200. And 73. Notice how the column weightings or the headings are increasing by a factor of 10 every time we move to the left. And this is because decimal is a base 10 number system. Now let's look at what is arguably the most famous number system when it comes to talking about computers and the world of computer science. And that's base 2, binary. So the base 2 number system only has two unique digits, 0 and 1. All other numbers in binary have to be made up of a combination of these two digits. This means our right-hand column has a weighting of 1, like before. But instead of timesing by 10 each time we move to the left, we now times our column weightings by 2, because it's a base 2 number system. So the next column has a weighting of 2 and then 4, and then 8, and then so on and so forth. So what is the number 0011? Well, that's naught lots of 8s, naught lots of 4, 1 lot of 2, and 1 lot of 1. A 2 plus a 1 is 3. So this number is 3 in decimal or deanery, 1 1 in base 2 binary. How about the number 1011? Well, that's an 8, no 4s, a 2 and a 1. 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11. So the number 1011 in base 2 binary is 11 in base 10 decimal. Notice how the column weightings and headings are increasing by a factor of 2 every time we move to the left. And this is because binary is a base 2 number system. Larger numbers will increase the number of digits required. For example, with eight digits, the smallest non-negative decimal number we could represent would be zero, and that would be a zero in each of the eight column positions. The largest non-negative decimal number we could represent would be 255, and that would be represented with a one in every single column. In the exam, you also need to be able to convert 
between base 10 decimal numbers back to base 2 binary equivalent. So let's have a go at converting the decimal number 77 into binary. We start on the left hand side with the column that has the most significant column weighting, and that's the 128. Now remember, the number we're trying to store in decimal is 77. So this column holds the value 128. Well, we look at how many 128s will fit into 77, and the answer is zero. So we still have got 77 left over, and we write a zero here. The next column is 64. Well, 64 will fit into 77 once. So we write a 1 here, and what we have left is 13. We carry on in this way. So how many 32s fit into 13? 0 with 13 left over. 16 into 13, 0 with 13 left over. 8 into 13, well we get one of those with 5 left over. 4 into 5, we get one of those with 1 left over. 2 into 1, that 0 with 1 left over. And 1 into 1 is 1 with 0 left over. This is the number 77 in base 2 binary. And we can prove it by adding up the columns that have a 1 in. That's a 64 plus an 8 plus a 4 plus a 1 is 77. Finally, let's look at the base 16 hexadecimal number system. The base 16 number system has 16 unique digits. Now this presents us with a unique problem. What do we use to represent the hex digits for the decimal numbers 10 through 15? We can't simply use those numbers as these are two separate digits stuck together. Instead, we use the first six letters of the alphabet. In hexadecimal, we use A to represent the deanery number 10. So here's all the number systems now that we've shown you. Decimal, base 10 on the left, hex base 16 in the middle, and binary base 2 on the right. All these number systems could represent 0 and 1 as a single digit. From 2 onwards, the binary system begins to combine digits together to represent the numbers. So 1, 0 equals 2. From 10 onwards, the decimal system starts to combine digits. However, hexadecimal can continue to use single digits. So the deanery number 10 is 1, 0 in decimal. It's 1010 in binary, and it's A in hexadecimal. This continues until we get to the number 15, which is 15 in decimal, F in hex, and then 1111 in binary. So, why is hexadecimal used in computer science? Well, it's used as it's a very convenient shorthand version of representing much longer binary numbers. We can see here the physical address of a computer is being represented as a series of six two digit hexadecimal numbers. In the other screenshot below, we can see that a colour is being represented with hexadecimal characters. We can see from the table on the right that a single hexadecimal character represents a sequence of four binary characters. So if we take our physical address 1831BF6B4CB3, now that's being represented in hexadecimal base 16, you can see how much longer that physical address would be if we had to represent it in its pure base 2 binary form. A similar way for the colour being represented in the bottom screenshot, it's only six digits, but we would have to use 24 
binary digits if we represented it in base 2. So hexadecimal can be used as a convenient shorthand for representing much longer sequences of binary digits. Now we've introduced the three base number systems you need to know about for computer science, you need to become familiar with easily converting between any of them to any other form in the exam. The above table allows you to easily convert positive integers between any of the three base number systems you need. Once you're familiar with the process, you'll be able to do away with the table and just convert them by hand. So let's convert the decimal number 12 into hexadecimal. To make things easier, we're going to convert it to binary first. So remember a 12 would be a 1 in an 8 column and a 1 in a 4 column. Now we can pad the other numbers out with 0 in the binary column. Now we can move on to the hex. Well what we do is we group the hex into 4 bit nibbles and then apply a mini binary waiting line. Well the first section is easy. We've got four zeros in binary, obviously will be a zero in hex, so we just can write zero down. The next four binary digits, we have a one in the eight column, a one in the four column, eight plus four is 12. And remember, a 12 in hex is represented by the single character C. So 12 in decimal is zero C, in hexadecimal. Okay, let's try 24 this time in decimal. So we start by putting it into binary. 24 in decimal in base 2 binary would be a 16 plus an 8. 16 plus 8 is 24. We put 1s in those columns and zeros in all the others. Now, to get to hexadecimal, we group together in groups of four, and we apply a mini binary waiting line. So the left hand four digits, so that's the first nibble there, we have a one in the one column, and then we have a zero, a zero, and a zero. So those first four binary digits represent one in hexadecimal. The right hand four digits, we have a one in the eight column, and then a zero, zero, and zero. So that's an 8 in hexadecimal. So 24 in decimal is 1 8 in hexadecimal. That's important you read it as 1 8 and not as 18. So let's try one more. Let's try 230. Okay, so we've done the maths for you. 230 in binary is 128, a 64, a 32, a 4, and a 2. So we put ones in each of those columns and noughts in the other three columns. We then break the number down into two nibbles, applying a mini binary waiting line to each nibble. So the left hand nibble, we have a one in the eight column, a one in the four and a one in the two. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now remember in hexadecimal, 14 is E. And in the right hand column, we have a one in the four column and a one in the two column. Four plus two is six. So the decimal number 230 in base 10 is E6 in base 16 hexadecimal. Okay, let's try going back the other way now. We'll present you with a base 16 hexadecimal number and you're gonna convert it all the way back to base 10 decimal. And again, to make it easier, we'll go through binary first. So the hexadecimal number we've got is A, B. We'll split it into the two components. We'll start with A. Now remember that can be represented by four binary digits, a nibble. So A in hexadecimal is 10 in decimal. So that'd be a one in the eight column, zero fours, one in the two column, and zero ones. Eight plus two is 10. So that's one, zero, one, zero. We do the same thing for the right nibble. So B in hexadecimal is 11 in decimal. That's an 8 plus a 2 plus a 1. 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's 1, 0, 1, 1. 
Now we have the full binary number written out. We apply the complete binary waiting line and add all the columns that have ones in. That's 128 plus a 32 plus an 8 plus a 2 plus a 1. So the number AB in hexadecimal is 171 in base 10 decimal. Let's just try the hexadecimal number 36. Remember that's 36, not 36. So we take the left hand digit of hex, which is a 3. We apply a mini binary waiting line, and 3 can be stored as 2 and a 1. So we put a 0 in the 8 column, a 0 in a 4, a 1 in the 2 column, and a 1 in the 1. We do the same thing with the right hand hexadecimal digit 6. That's a 4 plus a 2. So we have 0, 1, 1, 0. And then to get it back in decimal, we apply our overall binary waiting line across the entire eight digits and just add up all the columns we're one in. 32 plus 16 plus 4 plus 2 equals 54. Now we'll do one last example. We'll do 7F. So once again, the 7 is represented by 0, 1, 1, 1. That's a 0 in an 8 column plus a 4 plus a 2 plus a 1. And F is the biggest hexadecimal digit we can have in a single character. So that's a 1 in the 8 column, a 1 in the 4, a 1 in the 2, and a 1 in the 1. We apply our overall binary waiting line, and we add all the columns up that have 1s in. That's all of them, other than the 128 column. So this is the number 127. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How do we represent positive integers in binary? How can we use hexadecimal to represent positive integers? How does hexadecimal help us when representing large binary numbers? And how do we convert between the various base number systems, binary, decimal and hexadecimal? So technically that's the end of the video, but we've just got a couple of extra really interesting things to talk about, and if you want to listen to those, pop your pen down and carry on. So you now have all the tools you need to actually convert from one base number system to any other base number system. And although base 2, 10 and 16 are all you need to know for the exam, many other systems have been used throughout history. Around the 15th century, the Mayans used a base 20 number system, which is being shown here. In 3100 BC, the Babylonians were using a base 60 number system. The process, however, is exactly the same as everything else we've shown you in the video so far.